Hello everybody, welcome to another video. So today we're having a little play with the SATA X5500. This is a spraying video, but before we do some spraying, I just wanted to go into uh, it a little bit. What we're doing is we're using the 5500 1.3 CC clear setup. So hopefully you can see it there, the CC. Now the CC cap varies or differs from the standard cap. Now this is a standard cap, uh, an I cap, RPI cap. The CC is an I cap as well. I'm trying to focus on my eyes, that's better. Now hopefully you can see that the CC version, this one here, has a larger exit hole on the base of the air horn. So the one at the top is the same, but it's a larger exit hole on the base. So the cap is actually different. But one of the biggest differences I've found, and there is spraying in this video, we will go on and do some spraying so you'll see what they're actually like, is I, I ordered myself um, a, a, a whole depth, uh, sorry, a whole diameter gauge because SATA have forever been playing with their um, tip sizes. You know, they say they're a certain size and they're just not. Uh, so what I thought we would do is we'd have a little look at the CC version. So the CC version, which is the one here, again, it's going to try and focus on my face. That's it. So the CC version is here, and this is the normal I version. Now, this is a 1.2. This one here is a 1.2. You can see it written on it, a standard 1.2. And this is the CC version. Now, hopefully, you can see that the CC version actually has a smaller exit hole than the 1.2 RP. Hopefully, you can see that. I can't actually see well enough on the camera to see whether you are seeing that or not. But hopefully, you can see that. But I've used the depth gauge and I've got some interesting readings. I made a note of the readings earlier, uh, so I wasn't, you know, fumbling around because obviously it's quite difficult to see the, the end. But what it turns out is that a standard 1.2 IRP tip is actually 1.25, 1.25 millimeter. A 1.3 tip, a standard 1.3, this one is actually HVLP, is 1.35 millimeter so it is true that SATA actually put a, a bigger tip in than they they are theoretically claiming but when you look at the CC version which is this one here the difference which I hope you could see on camera but the difference is quite stark it's one of the first thing I noticed that they that the hole looks a lot lot smaller even though they're claiming it's 1.3 and the 1.3 CC actually measures 1.1 five millimeter so it's actually a 1.15 not a 1.3 uh, for whatever reason they measure it like they do but I think you'll find that a lot of people say this thing is quite slow and we'll go into that in, in the video because the, these are quite slow but it's because they're not a 1.3 they're actually a 1.1 a 1.1 with SATA measurements, if, if all there is a half millimetre oversize, it's actually a 1.1. I haven't got a 1.1 because I'd be very interested to try the standard RPI setup with a 1.1. Uh, no doubt I will pick one up. If I can find one cheap or whatever, I will pick one up eventually. But that's what I think is actually giving it its um, major difference rather than just the air cap. But anyway, we'll see in the video. But I just wanted to get that um, out there, for want of a better word. Uh, so that you guys could see that there is actually a physical difference. There's no difference between the air holes. There's still 12 in each cap, and the diameter is about 1.6 millimetres. That's the same um, on, on, on the cap, so th that isn't different. So it's just a slight difference with the, uh, well, quite a reasonable difference with the air cup cap, and this, this smaller tip, although it says 1.3, it is a smaller tip. But let's have a look and uh, see how it performs. So apologies for anybody that's seen my previous video on the 1.3 SATA CC setup. But I thought it was worth including the intro because a lot of people would, would watch this video that haven't watched the other video. So again, as I say, apologies if you've already watched that other video for leaving the footage in at the front. 
of this one. But this is actually looking at how it compares to the 1.2. Uh, and that's in the eye pattern. Now, when you get to the end, or if you want to skip to the end, you'll see that the patterns are quite different with these. And you would expect that, I guess, because w when you see in the intro, a 1.2 SATA is in fact a 1.25 millimeter. So, you know, halfway between 1.2 and 1.3 in most other manufacturers, or the way most other manufacturers um, measure their equipment. So, when you're dealing with the 1.3 cc, as I say, it is actually a 1.15. Uh, cc for want of a better word but the cap is also different as i showed you in the intro the cap is also different so how does it actually manifest itself in spraying well one of the things that um i think i said at the start or maybe i said it on on the other video but i'd already been told by a, a fair few people probably about five or six by the time I um, did this video, of the various ways that they've used the SATA CC. Some people were saying you need to use it at 2.2 bar, although I used it at 2 bar in this video, the same as I used the uh, 1.2i uh, setup, and it works perfectly, perfectly well at that. Uh, I know some people do use their SATAs at a higher pressure, but I haven't found the need to whatsoever. But yeah, and one of the things they were saying is it needs more pressure, and I haven't found that. But another thing that people say is that this thing needs to be used, the CC needs to be used closer to the panel, and indeed it does. It, it, has a, it does make use of that better finish being closer to the panel, and I think it's because it's just not putting out so much material, because that smaller tip is effectively hold, holding it back. I used both of these on full fluid, uh, but the CC is is very slow. One of the complaints people have about this is how slow it is. Uh, and as I say, that is done by purely the fact that it's got a smaller tip. And the cap will have something to do to it, with it as well. But a lot of it, I suspect, is the fact that it's got a smaller tip than the, uh, the 1.2. One of the things I was going to do, which I haven't actually got round to yet, I haven't, I haven't found one, and I'm certainly not going to buy a new one, uh, about 200 GB pounds you're looking for a tip set for one of these. But what I wanted to get was a tip set in 1.1. So a 1.1i or a 1.10 version for the standard RP and see how that actually compared to the, um, the 1.3 CC because that's effectively what you're dealing with. Um, I haven't, as I say, I haven't actually got round to getting one yet. Uh, you'll see me heating up the clear coat here. It's it's not recommended at all. It's something I do. It works very, very well. Uh, as I say, I don't recommend you do it. But if you do do it, I find 10 seconds per 100 milliliter of mixed clear is absolutely fine. The temperature uh, on this day was, was actually quite cold. It was 9 degrees Celsius, which is about 48 degrees Fahrenheit. So you'll see the ambient temperature given on the um, temperature gauge there and you'll see how much I heat, heated the clear coat up to uh, but it's normally about 35 36 degrees celsius and it just helps it flow out better another thing I did with this was I used um, a different clear coat normally I use on a lot of these comparisons I try and use the same clear coat to make it comparable to other videos but I deliberately used uh, in this one a Multimix 2, which is a, a slightly better, well, it is a fair bit better. It's a little bit more expensive than the U-Pole, but it does actually flow out better. Uh, some people have used it and, and said to me they really can't get on with it, but I seem to get on with it okay. But it does flow out better, and I, I deliberately chose that clear coat because it would flatter the CC, because with something like the U-Pole clear coat, which is, um, even though it's the same viscosity, it really doesn't flow out that well. So you need to, to put it on more or less how you want it to finish, if that makes sense. Because after you stop, there's not much flowing going on. Um, so you need to put it on nice and wet. Now the, the 
eye is perfectly capable of doing that because it's flowing more material uh, and it ju it's just a faster gun compared to the CC. But the CC would be really slow to try and make it put enough material on to get something like the U-Pole to flow out. So I deliberately use uh, the multi-mix to give the CC a better chance. It doesn't affect the, um, the 1.2... RP, the IRP version, but it just allows the CC to uh, be at its best, really. Um, that's the idea of it. So we're using the uh, SATA CC now, and you can see it's got quite a, a long, thin pattern, very much in the stable of an Iwata. A lot of the Iwata guns give you a, a, a quite a long, thin pattern. So that would also explain why it's it's a bit slower as well because the pattern is longer normally that that's a better base coat pattern i find a a, a, a tall thin pattern is is good for base coats but i find that a, a a smaller pattern and a wetter pattern is better for clear coat and it's one of the reasons a lot of people prefer the 1.2 or 1.3 o version of the sata Having said that, there's not a lot of difference between the I and the O on the Sartre. I did a comparison, which I'll put a link in the description if you want to see the difference. But the difference was relatively small compared to some manufacturers that, uh, you know, do different types of caps for a certain gun. Uh, it didn't have that much... Um, but it didn't make that much difference at all but using the rp i i give it more distance away from the panel so for the cc i was around about five inches which is what a lot of people say you need to be closer to the panel and it does it does help get the best out of the cc but with the rp i'm normally about seven inches away from the panel so 175 uh, millimeter something like that and that seems to perform really really well uh to, to, to tell you the truth, looking at these two, now, obviously spraying in colder conditions is a bit more difficult anyway because you need to be careful how much material you, you put on. But to, to tell you the truth, when you actually looked at these two with the human eye, you could see a flatter finish from the CC. And as I said in my original video, I'll put a link in the description again, although you need to miss out the first five minutes because it's the same as this video. Uh, I'll put a link in the description and it, it really can produce very flat finishes. So it's ideal for, you know, custom car makers and people like that that, that want to take their time over doing something don't mind spending that extra time on achieving a really good finish i don't think it's going to be any good for production boys and things like that because it's, it's just not really fast enough of course one of the drawbacks with this gun and most starters really is the price and i know people say oh well you get what you pay for well to a degree you do but i mean you know i'm a bit of a freak really i've got lots of different spray guns i like doing things like this for those that are, are new to the channel, I actually do bike stuff. So I've got a couple of um, spare panels here, which are exactly the same. And I use these for comparisons, but most of the stuff I do is bike related. So I really don't need all the equipment I've got. But, you know, want and need are, are totally separate things. Um, it's the price of them. I mean, these things are really, really expensive. And as I just said, people say you, you get what you pay for. And, and having having experienced some of the um, better Chinese guns, uh, some of the Italian guns, and I say that by A&I and, and things like that, uh, you can get equal to these performance-wise. Longevity, yeah, I mean, I think a SATA would probably out, out well, not probably, a SATA would outlast an A&I. The porpoise guns seem to be very, very well made. Uh, you know, too early really to say how how long they they will last. But there's other you know guns out there that are certainly knocking on the door, performance wise of these, if not beating SATA jets. Uh, and and some of them are half the price, if if not less. So it, it really can be. Um, it's difficult to justify sometimes. I was talking to a chap, oh, I say talking, we were messaging the other day and, and the guy was saying that he'd been uh, a painter for the last 
50 years, I think it was, and now he'd retired, he wasn't doing much. But he remembers when SATA was sort of similar price to other guns. And it does seem that SATA Jet have uh, earned this reputation of, of good, dependable quality and really racked the prices up. Now, some of that could be the fact that they, they still make them in Germany, so production costs are going to be relatively high, although De Vilbis make um, guns in the UK, and I would think production costs are just as high in the UK as they are in Germany, rather than you know farm them, farming them out to the Far East, where production costs can be normally cheaper. Um, but they do seem to have racked their prices up, uh, which you know is a bit... Um, disappointing i suppose you would say but back to the uh, 1.2 i which is the gun we're about to see you should see and, and one of the reasons for doing this um video back to back with the same panels etc is that you can actually see what um how fast the guns are because you can look at the time it takes uh, and see which one's faster and how they cover the panel. I'm just putting some um, 2K clear coat through here. And uh, people often ask me, what do I mean by 2K clear coat? It's just virgin thinners. So it's thinners that haven't been um, used before. Any gun wash type thinners are normally reclaimed. So it's, it's old thinners that have gone through various processes to remove any contaminants. But sometimes there are some left in there. So I know some people use gun wash thinners for primer and stuff like that because it doesn't matter so much. I tend not to. But I always put a bit of um, 2K virgin thinners through the gun before I actually load it up with clear coat or base coat or anything. Just in case any contaminates are left from the, the cleaning process when you last clean the gun and uh, put it away. So the 1.2i, as I say, you will see is... is it's a lot thicker pattern and it's also shorter although it's the i version which is designed to have a bigger pattern and again I'll, I'll go back to the video which i'll put a link in the description between the i and the o there's not a huge difference but the o is actually more squatter than this pattern as well and it, it tends to because the tip is actually the same physical size it tends to wet up quicker and i find that better for a uh, clear coat and a lot of people, a lot of starter guys, actually prefer the O to the I for clear coat. Uh, and I think I do as well. Certainly if you come from a, a starter 5000, you will find that the, um, the O is, is more replicating what a 5000 does rather than the I. The I, I think the I was just trying to be... Um, someone that was coming from De Vilbis or Iwata or someone like that that was used to a bigger pattern it was a way of getting them into the SATA brand without giving them the shock of a smaller pattern although Iwata makes smaller patterns you know their wider series and some of their W400s uh, have a, a smaller pattern depending what cap you've got so you know I'm not saying that it's purely the preserve of um of SATA but yeah it, it certainly I think it was it was designed to give people less of a sh more of an easier change around if they were going to try the SATAs uh, but certainly the purists would as I say use normally use the O but I thought I would use the I because it was more reminiscent of the sort of pattern you're getting with the CC um, because that's more that's much more of an I pattern so I thought it was more comparable but certainly if you're looking at these two panels um uh, as i said before it, it, i couldn't go mad with the clear coat because it was quite cold and it, it, you're just going to end up with runs so i was trying to get as much on as i could without getting the runs but you could genuinely see uh, a, a smoother pattern from the cc not a lot but it is actually there you can actually see the difference more to the human eye. I mean, if you look at this now, this is with the eye. It, it look it looks fine. It, it, the finish is really good. And if you were trying for a, a, an OEM finish, then certainly you would use the eye, and you wouldn't use the CC anyway, because you you, you could use it a further distance. I have tried it a further distance, and you do get more of a uh, more of a peel than using it uh, a closer distance. And that's simply because the by bringing it further away, the pattern actually widens, widens further still. 
Um, and you end up getting, because the amount of material is not going through, you end up getting more peel unless you really slow down to get more material on to allow it to flow out. So uh, you saw at the start of the video the, the, the difference between the tip. It is quite stark, the difference between the uh, actual size of the hole. But you can see the patterns are also quite different. Both of them good guns. Uh, as I say, the CC would suit somebody uh, whose who's pure want and need is for a flat finish. You see here, the first panel we're looking at here is the I, the 1.2 IRP. And you can see it's actually um, a pretty good finish. And this is the CC. And I'm trying to get as close as I can with the light coming from the side so that you can see the difference in peel but it is a flatter finish on the right hand side and as I say you could you could improve this by having warmer conditions because I, I, I had to be careful not to get runs um, and to get the best finish I could without overloading the panel because because of the cold weather it would just it, even though you've heated the clear up um, if you it doesn't give you much margin to overload it both these panels are off the gun obviously I haven't touched them uh, look at my notes. I left them for two days, so any initial die back, um, with, with, you know, had gone. But I think you can see there is more peel on the left-hand side than on the right-hand side. Both of them actually give a really good finish. But when you're paying that sort of money for a spray gun, I would think you uh, would expect that anyway. Anyway, guys, as always, thank you for watching. Sorry, I haven't been getting many videos up. I've been really busy doing loads of different stuff. Um, so narrating videos is, is something I've, I've had to put on the back burner, but I'll try and get a few more up. But as always, thanks for watching, and uh, you keep watching them and I'll keep making them. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye.